Sometimes I think I'm having a midlife crisis doing this, and others might agree, but I think it's working. My name's Kieran Dodds. I'm a photographer based in Edinburgh. My personal work looks at the interplay of environment and culture. And, and I'm particularly interested in how humans shape their landscapes in a time of ecological crisis. So the landscape I grew up was near Stirling. And I used to love going walking in the hills with my father and we'd go over these hills, including Damayat and the Ockels. And it was there that we used to dream together about the forest, which came part of the way up the hill and then just stopped um, in this boggy moorland. And we used to dream about expanding that forest and taking it across the landscape. But I became a photographer and I've not had the money to buy that landscape. But then I discovered recently that the University of Edinburgh had bought the land and had started rewilding. And so I went up to a landscape that I have known so well since I was a child, a landscape that inspired me to go to university to study conservation and zoology. It was a place that was really formative to me as a photographer, both in visualizing the landscape, but also as a vantage point to create these abstracted aerials. So when I went there, it was incredible to see that already the transformation is at work. They've created these trenches, which look like somebody has come along with a, a vast sewing machine and the needle has been prodding the ground and creating these holes. And in between, they've left these native trees. They're gonna build a forest. So it looks like somebody is, is like a seamstress is trying to weave together this damaged landscape. Um, and that's what it looks like from the air. You wouldn't see that from any other perspective. But then to see the full climax vegetation, I went to my local wood called Minewood. And it only just occurred to me that Minewood is called Minewood because it used to have mines. And they used to mine for copper and gold and silver for the royal crown. And so to realize again that this is a, a beautiful natural landscape, at least to me growing up, this is what nature looks like. And yet it is in post-industrial natural landscape. It has been rewilded. So what I've done with fabricated land is to get these aerial abstract photographs, they're like swatches of the landscape and I go about collecting them from industrial sites, from ecological sites, from historical sites and I would go back to my studio and I would slice them up, these beautiful archival prints, slicing them up seems slightly insane and it's quite different from my normal practice where I want to show prints and, and the full beauty of the, the photograph. Printmaking process, it's editing it down to an image that summarizes that place and then it's finding a partner to pair it with but it's narrative driven so these two images i've chosen because they are one is a rewilding site and one is a former industrial site that is now mature forest and so then i have to bring them together and it starts with a study weave often different patterns and um, sometimes different images just to see how they work together and after I tried a few different images, I realized that the, which ones were best. So it starts with these little eight by sixes, just so I'm not bankrupting myself with the big ones. And then I moved on before to the A2, well, 20 inch by 16. When you go up to a larger scale, it changes the resolution so you can see more through, it's almost like a window through the textile. Um, and that was the largest I'd done until now. And I've just decided to scale up even further. You never know quite what you're gonna get, which is exciting. And it's taken ages and you wonder why actually I'm doing it sometimes, but you've got to trust the process and the weave because I love, I love what it's doing with the narrative and I love what it's doing visually. There's moments when you think you should just give up. You push yourself and yet what you seem to have in your hands are just some cut up prints and a dwindling bank account. 
But then you stand back and you see it and you realize, actually, no, you've done something. You've created something. And you push yourself beyond what you thought was possible. <laughs>